graphic will be painting and uh, nighttime fireworks one. So we're going to be doing a really nice uh, nighttime piece with a uh, whole night sky, fireworks, a river. It's going to look really cool and it's actually going to be really simple to make. So you all have palettes, you all have canvases, you all have a piece of paper to wipe your brushes with. Uh, usually we use paper towels, but that's going to happen. I would recommend just putting the paper that you wipe your brushes with on your lap and then having the canvas on the desk. I know, tiny desks. And then, of course, you have your brushes and you have your palette of paints. These are the colors we're going to you use. You have water? Yeah, but a bit later. Yeah, and be but... careful, you will have a glass of water. It's not for drinking. It's for brush cleaning. And don't drink your paint water. I'm not liable if you get an upset tummy. And starting where you ended your purple, 
make her way a bit more out. Here you have to get some more blue, you get more blue. I don't like cleaning my brushes when I'm doing braiding simply because it naturally just makes a mid tone between the two colors. I only clean when I'm like really wanting to get the truest form of color. And we're just going to keep going outwards. So we're about halfway. And we're, cool. and we're trying to get our Working into kind of making the angle of rainbow triangle 
arch form. Because this is where we can actually have the water and everything, which is where the first ingredient. So we're going to take our royal blue, go to where we ended our normal blue, and just start blending it in. I use a 
the cat and the yeah. dragon? Well, I've never, I've never used, I've never done that. I've been stuck to brushes. Yeah, we will move forward in a minute. I've painted a couple of miniatures just to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, like I've, Warhammer? Yeah. I know a lot of people who got into painting through Warhammer figurines. <laughs> I mean, it's a fun way to do it. Uh, Warhammer actually is a really fun like hack to make like really epic looking ones where you paint the whole thing white and then you brush over it with black because then it naturally indicates the lights and shadows of the 3D piece. Mm -hmm. And then you take a specific type of paint that's not like fully opaque or, you know, not fully visible, translucent. And all you have to do is just paint over those parts and you already made the lights and shadows. So it looks like you did painstaking work to make shadows. No, you didn't. You just went slip, slap, slop, and you made something cool. I love painting. You don't need effort. Well, you need effort, but it's more working smarter than harder. Uh, but yes, so. Do we clean it? Yes, you can clean your brushes. Now we've worked with a very soft method like making the gradient. Now we're going to be just doing some nice, easy hard shapes to make our uh, little, little city. So, once your brushes are clean, we're going to take a scoop of our purple. Put it in the palette mixer. What's up? I probably put way too much paint on that brush. It takes me a while. Oh, it's okay. Well, maybe if you stop it harder like this. So we're going to take our purple, put a scoop of it into our middle, and then we're going to take a little bit of black, and we're going to mix that in. I don't like working with straight. Uh, straight black color, I like adding a little bit of something else. Makes it, it sounds like a very rarity thing to say a warm toned black or a cool toned black, but it, it does make a difference. It makes everything a lot more harmonious in the piece. So once you get your very violety black, we're going to go to where we ended our gradient and, you, and holding our brush very straight, we are going to make our horizon line. And I'm curving mine off at the end here so it's not completely straight. This is where we will begin. Does the horizon line need to be straight? No, I mean I curved mine off at the end. No, maybe can it go wavy? You can go wavy if you want. Is your city uh, a rustic city, like half of Milan, or um, a very uh, metropolitan paradise, like the other half of Milan? <laughs> I went to the Duomo, the, the cathedral, the other day when I was here for just touristy things. It's very funny to go up on the terrace of it and see all like the older buildings, and then far off in the distance you have these big glass like New York City skyscrapers. It's like there is dichotomy here. It's very, it's very weird. It's like being stuck in a very specific bubble in time. But yeah, once we get that horizon line, all we're gonna do is just foop, foop upwards and make different sized little buildings. 
You can make skinny ones, wide ones, ones that climb on rocks. It's just to give the impression that there is stuff there. I'm putting a little skinny line in the middle of one of them to kind of make like a bell tower impression. But at the end of the day, it's all lines and blocks, blocks and lines. The big thing here is shape and weight variancy. You don't want just a bunch of uniform buildings. You want to stagger spacing and sizes. Make it eclectic. In the, uh, hey, audio person back there, is it possible that you could put on some smooth jazz or something? Something very chill. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, oh man, because I mean, someone was able to blast dubstep earlier, but smooth jazz, no. Yeah, well, I also have been doing this stuff for over half my life. Well, I mean, if I started when I was 12 and I'm 26, then no, it would be over half my life. It, 14 years I've been painting. Okay. <clears throat> no, the secret is my mother ate paint while pregnant with me. <laughs> In the womb, I started finger painting. Just going... Eh. And when you feel like you're ready, just stop. All right, so just let me know when you guys are ready for us to go to our next step. And this is just all the hoity-toity art stuff now, but soon we get to add the fun part, the fireworks.
and we're gonna do a big step soon. We're gonna switch brushes. Ooh. I know, right? Uh, we are going to be switching to our number seven. It's kind of a pointed brush. So we clean that up for the way? Uh, you can clean it, just keep it in the water. We will be returning to it when we make our water. But we're going to be doing some details onto, the, uh, onto our skyline. The next thing we're gonna be doing with our number seven brush, we're just gonna dip it, dip the tip in the white, and we're just gonna make little impressions on the buildings as if they have windows, lights inside of them. It's just a tiny detail. It's pure white. If you wanna mix a color with it, you could. Um, you could mix some yellow with it. And what I'm doing, along with, left. of what? Can you do some bit of white? I might mean, have a mess with it. Um, hold on, I have some extra white. Coffee, but I didn't order one. You, for the coffee, you want it, uh, they bring it to the uh, inkable. Um, sure, I didn't order a coffee. Okay, sorry. It's okay. But yeah, anyways, the other thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna mix a little bit of white with some yellow. And I'm going to make as if there's little string lights in the town. Maybe the town's having a festival. Maybe it's celebrating a Pona Fest. And to do that, I'm just making dots around different parts. Just, just little dots, little diddly dots. The smaller the dots, the farther away they are. 
but I just think it adds some life to the city. All right, once you guys are ready, we will move on to our next step, which is doing the water, which is very easy because we are simply reversing what we did up here. Back to our big brush, back to our tent. We are going to mix some of our really light blue again, our little Buna blue. Though when it's at its lightest, it's more of a dashy blue, TBH. And we're just going to start going just under our horizon. So we start off light and we go dark. Right? Yep, we start light and go dark. Because our water is very close to the light source, which is the city. You need more white? I need to get a little white to see All right, hold on. Okay. I mean, there's an empty palette oh, here with some white, so yeah. you can use that. But yes, we're gonna just start with our lights and go back to our darks. You've done this before. We just make our way back to the bluish purple and then our purple at the bottom. The 
We are an android. It's okay. See? Perfectly fine. And if something did happen, we would just say it's abstract. It's a statement. Exactly. It's a statement. It's a statement of, of hopefully, society. The, of society. Yeah, society. Just my own style. Not bold and destroy your heart. Bold and brush. It is bold and brash. Le bold, le brash. And just to add some depth to this, I am going to take a tiny bit of black, just the littlest, littlest kiss of black, and blend it into the very, very bottom of the purple. You don't want too much because black is a very overpowering color. That and red, those things take over everything. Yes, just like OCs. Besides, we are going to put a little bit of foreground here to break up all the water so we will be using black anyways. But one thing if you want to do to add a little something something is you can take a little bit of your mixture that you had for the uh, violety black that you used for your skyline. You just put a very, very tiny brit on your brush. Go to your horizon line and just lightly fan downwards. As if it's reflecting off the water. You don't need a lot. Just enough that you can drag down. I'm thinning mine out a bit with water. Just adds a little something something. And then, with my seven brush, the one we use for little dots, taking a little bit of pure white and just random little ticks in the water. a little bit closer to each other as you reach your skyline. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can fan them out at the bottom, blend them out a bit. It's just to make it feel like this water is alive, moving, schmoving. Maybe there's a sea pony in there, who knows? It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. This 
And I'm taking the white mixed with yellow and mimicking the little string lights that I did up there, but they're in the reverse direction to heighten that uh, reflection effect. It's little details that really heighten it. It's all in the deets. Can we go back to the reflections for a moment? Yes. How do you do that? Um, you take your like violety black that you use to make your skyline, and you just put a little bit on your on your uh, thick brush, and you just brush downwards, just enough that it gives like the impression. So you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. Is someone walking? Oh, it's that thing up there. Yeah. It has a very good cadence movement. Like it was like dun 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 dun. It wants to show us something. <laughs> I was wondering where like the screen would be. The ghost of a past. Now, once you guys are ready, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I know we haven't have been having that already. Wow. I'll wait till I see all your bright shining faces. Just like below. Before we have the finding, can you repeat please uh, what you did to get the details in the water uh, after the reflection? Oh, uh, I just took a little, with our seven brush, I just took a little bit of white and I did very small little lines in the water and then I just blended out the bottom. So you don't need to use a lot of paint. You can just do, if you want, you can do little little uh, reflections of like the string lights in the water, just in, just to give it the impression. I didn't go heavy on it, but it's just so you know it's there. We are doing pretty good on time too, so that's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's great. So for the people who are ready to move on, what we're gonna do, still with our seven brush, we're gonna dip it in the water, get some white, water down some white, get our brush nice and coated in it. We'll get you more white.
All right, before I move to the next step, does anyone else need more white? I will not be coming down again. Depends. We will need more white. Well, we're going to need it for the fireworks and the stars. Okay, more white, please. Okay. <laughs> you have to help. This is what a teacher feels like. But yes, okay, so we're going to take our watered down white, get our brush nice and coated in it. We're going to go by the sky, hold your brush like this with your pointer and your thumb at the end. We're going to flick. It's a very easy way to make stars. Now I'm being a little heavy handed, so some of mine have become shooting stars. But that is fine. This thing comes off with uh, water, right? Paint. Yeah, it's water based. Cool. Yes, it's based. You can do as many or as little as you want. I'm also doing some some light flicks in the water to have the stars reflect in the water. I watered down the white paint, get the ah, paint okay. on the brush, and then I did. Okay, so you put it on the constellation looking things are. Yeah, my, mine made constellations, <laughs> but I also had a lot of paint on my brush. But hey, what we don't like, we cover with fireworks, which will be our next step, which I am very excited for. We will be using a different brush for the fireworks. We will be using our six brush. Yep, the brush with the number six. It's kind of like your seven except bigger. <clears throat> if you were wondering why we had these bright neon colors on your palette, well, we're about to use them. Yes, we are going to be making some fireworks. So, <laughs> sorry, this one. Your six brush. Just the six brush. Yes, and that's it. Okay. So. Are you sure it's not nine? Because six is flat. Oh yeah, nine. Sorry, mine said six on the side. Because I was holding it like this. Darn. So the pointy one. The pointy one. Pointy step. Thank you. I have the same problem with playing cards. <laughs> on good dice, there is lines under the numbers if it's yes. confusing. Yes. It, you think they would have that here, but. Do they have text next to it? So. I aligned them. Next Mine doesn't to each other. have text. Oh. Mine just says royal. <laughs> but anyways, so we're going to take our nine, dip it in white, and just pick where you want your first firework. I'm going to put mine right here. Now I'm just going to make a big old white circle. This is our beginning. Then, we're going to do our gradient method all over again. We're going to pick which color we want. 
as our first firework. I'm going to go with green. Take a little bit of that. Go to the outer part of our white circle and just start slowly adding color and fanning outwards. And then we are going to just tap the outer part of our circle to make it nice and soft, like a little soft ball of light, little tippy taps. I'm also going to just stick a little bit more white in the center just because that is the epicenter of the firework. The middle of the explosion. Do -do -do -do. It's okay. I'll, it's a good ringtone. It's a stock ringtone. It's better than the stock apple one. But wait, that's an actual ringtone. That was notification. That there is a ringtone option. That is the default one. That is just. I hate it. Best ringtone is Pinky's Parasite Poker. Fight me. I mean, that's not a default one, so I can't fight you on subjective terms, but I can fight you on facts. Because the fact is, there's, that's not the subject of the debate. <laughs> but yes, okay, so we have our light, and now our next thing is to make the little fuse, the, the fuse of the fireworks. So we're just gonna take whatever was your color that you decided your firework to be, dip your brush in it, and then, phew. Just make some fuse, different shape, different sizes, just appearing from it. Few, 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 few. Have fun with it. There is no wrong way to do a firework. <laughs> Who did you give $25 to? Someone's more right than the other. That's why it's green. I put some coming out of our little light ball and I have other bits just on the outer parts, like so. I'm also going to take a little bit of white and just go to the upper parts of each of my little fuse. Give them a little shine, a little highlight, a little light light. How do you do this little highlight? You just take the tip of your brush, dip it in the white, and just go to whatever direction you want on the top or bottom of your little few lines and just make a tiny line on top of them. It looks like something. 
And that's our first firework. Big old ball of light in the sky. If we had more time, I would do um, like soft lights around each of the few lines to give it just a softer effect, but we are working against the clock, people. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start our next, I'm gonna clean my brush and start our next firework, which is the same method as the first one, except I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller to give the impression that it's farther out in the distance. So I'm gonna put one right here. And I think I'm going to make it pink. Yes. I think you must spell purple. I mean, hey, if you want to do a purple firework, I'm not stopping you. We, not, we may not be in America, but in this room right now, it's a free country. Yeehaw, yahi, wahoo. We snaw. We snaw, yeah. I want to wish you a happy heart swarming from the bottom of my heart. Yes, because that's what I love to sing on Christmas, a villain song. I mean, that's what the Grinch's tune is, and that's a Christmas song. True. It's just, it, it's for those people who just want a villain song on the holidays. I'm down. I mean, I relate to a song like that. What, you hate Christmas? Not really. I just... The fact that you have I guess so many people. The capitalism around Christmas is horrible. I like food. I like the food with Christmas. Yeah, but it's fun. Are you allergic to fun? Then why are you watching a horse show? Yeah. Uh, Just go to Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call masochism. But who are we to judge? I'll judge. She is the teacher. I am teacher, judge, and executioner. That's right, this is a squid game now. Whoever's painting I don't like dies. Okay, I'll make my next from that. Wow, are you okay? At least the same role. Why is this just natural? See, I was going to make the punchline that I'll like all of your paintings because you put, you made a painting. Now I'm just sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 12 years of 
school in public health and hard skills. <laughs> Exactly. That's the whole point of painting is going with the flow. I started painting just because I really liked how therapeutic it was to just put some paint on there, slippy slop, and just move my hand around. You don't feel crushed when a three-year-old sells her painting for like millions of dollars and they just like slop stuff on the yeah, you know what? Good for them. I respect the hustle. One thing I really want to start, I, I want to try, I would need to pick a sep an area so far away from the convention space to do it because um, if I pitch the idea to most convention heads, they're like, how big of a mess will this be? I would love to teach an acrylic pouring panel, like where you take like the liquidy, acrylic paints, you put it in a cup, you pour it on the canvas and you like gravity do the work and it makes like these cool marble designs. It is so much fun. I do it as a hobby. And uh, I would love to have a like a workshop where people could just make their own ones, make them pony colored and all that. But man, pitching that to a convention, they'll be like, are you bringing your own tarps? Because that's what you would need because those things get messy. Just take all the bronies outside the convention hall and spray them down with a hose afterwards before they can go into any other space. I mean, we could just do that in general. All right, everyone get a hazmat suit. All right, everyone, get on your gloves, your masks, uh, your, your bubble boy size bubbles. The panel costs will be the hundreds per person, just for the suit. Just for the suit. Oh, no. Well, yes, uh, you can keep the suits because I don't want it after people have been inside them anyways. We don't wash the suits. The paint on the suits oh, is then as well. don't be like the first suitors at Furry Weekend Atlanta who are like, I like the smell of my suit when I uh, when I don't shower. <laughs> I like my natural musk. It's like, no, you know what? You may like it. You know who doesn't like it? Every other person around you. <laughs> and probably your mother. Like, you know. Maybe furries like smelling each other. No, they probably do. <laughs> but you know what? There's other people at the, at the hotel and the, the convention center at the same time. Also, all those poor service dogs, they have a better sense of smell than us. Oof. They'll smell you. And then they'll service just... Service dogs, do you mean actual dogs or furries that are... Actu actual dogs. Don't say that stuff. Actual <laughs> dogs. I actually don't laugh. We're talking furries, the rabbit hole is deep. Yeah, I don't want to know about it. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Exactly. I've learned to speak more than this. <laughs> I do like the idea of someone cosplaying as like an ESA, like an emotional service dog, or um, a service dog. So they're just a fursuit, but they have the little service dog vest on, and they're just like, hello, I'll give you... I, I mean, there was... Um, you guys have... Have you guys heard of the show Bluey? Yeah. There was a person who fursuited at Furry Week in Atlanta in a, in a bandit, the dad from Bluey, like a one-for-one -one costume. And he was so popular to take pictures with, there was a line of people, like a, just a photo op line that they made. It was, it was actually really wholesome. So many people came up with their dogs and they were like, my dog wants to meet you. Which is so cute, because the dogs were just like, hello friend, hello friend. We don't deserve dogs. We deserve cats at least. Yeah, I mean, we caused that. I'm not sure if cats have domesticated themselves. Yeah, but you know what? We made ourselves too submissive. Cats would just, if you don't, you know, if you don't do something that they like, they'll just be sticking around. Yeah. They'll judge you. Though they have, there, ha there was an article that came out that scientifically cats are getting dumber. Their brains are getting smaller. They are going to be in a heck of their own creation, which I'm fine with. 
Don't act like you're superior. Your brain is smaller per capita than mine. I feed you. Too many people sing for cats, so that's not gonna change. It's it's one of the things though where it's just I saw a video on TikTok the other day where it was like um someone bought like a really nice like food for the cats. And the cat's right next to the food eating something that was just on the floor. They'd rather eat floor scraps. Dumbass. But yeah, so one thing we're gonna do, once you get done with your fireworks and you know what color your fireworks are, I'm also gonna put just a few, like we did with the white lines of the water, I'm just gonna put a few of the color of the fireworks, just to have the indication of the light, but if we reflect the fireworks one for one, it'll be too busy. So just having little lines just to indicate. It's all we really need. So is painter your official job? Uh, my official job is actually an animator. Really? Yeah, I animate and edit for uh, Saber Spark, and I also work for a channel called DA Games. I'm like a cast member on that. We make a lot of like music based around video games and stuff. Fun fact, after this convention, I fly back, and then a day later I have to fly out again to Atlanta for uh, a convention for DA Games where I'm actually performing, I'm singing. So, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, as they say. Yeah, but painting is what I'm actually professionally trained to do. But I do a lot of digital art and stuff because that helps pay the bills because it's faster. But I do love painting. I'm painting an Izzy in the vendor hall, actually. Yes. I worked a bit on her this morning when I couldn't sleep. She's getting quite close to being finished. I just force myself to go back to sleep. I, I can't do that. Because then I won't be able to wake back up. Like, I go somehow into a deeper sleep, and then I woke up this morning, and it was like, oh, it's 8.30. I have to be ready for a panel in like a half hour. Whoop. For me, it's just like, I'll wake up before my alarm, and I'm like, no, go back to bed. No, no like, if I'm up, I'm up. Yeah, same. If I try to do that, I have sleep paralysis. Oh, that's not fun. Yeah, I'm just taking a peek at you guys. Because we have one more thing we're going to do. We're going to put a horse in it. Did you do that effect horse? Yeah, I did little lines, like, with, like the white lines we did, but with the color of the fireworks. But yes, we're going to put a horse in it, because every con asks me, how can you make this pony themed? Just I put a horse in it! That's fair. But this will probably be the simplest thing that we do this entire... I mean, uh, flicking the brush to make stars is pretty simple. This will be the second simplest thing that we do. <laughs> then we're going to cover this whole thing in black and just put a Pinkie Pie sticker on it. Done. No, 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 no. So we're going, we're going to go back to our 10 brush once you guys are ready. It's a statement on society. But we're going to take, speaking of black paint, we're going to take our black paint. And right here, in the bottom left corner, we're just gonna make a little swoop of land right here. I'm making this black instead of the violety black like uh, the skyline just because this is closer to the foreground. In fact, it is the most foreground you can possibly get.
Yeah, we're going to put it right, right here in the corner. Because that's where our horse is going to be. The horse is watching the fireworks. Exactly! You got it! Wow! I think it's the horses shooting the fireworks out there. Out there what? Their eyes. Oh, I heard another thing. I heard another thing that starts, that ends with s. But I heard something that starts with the letter A instead of E. Out there. Out of their magic horns. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's out of their horns, not out of their uh, chocolate starfish. <laughs> I love the biscuit. <laughs> Can't say that with a straight face because that's a lie. But yes, so we're going to make the shadow of a pony. Jokes on you. We were going to do a character this whole. But luckily, making the silhouette of a pony is really easy. It's a very, it's just a bunch of shapes. So. Right, right about here, like, so your head's not touching the skyline. We're gonna make a circle. Are we using the numbers? Oh, we're using the number nine now. Uh, which Black. Okay. Black. Sorry, I got, my head got stuck in butt firework mode. <laughs> Yep, just a black circle that's going to be their head. And then... <sighs> you can make it any pony you want. You can make it your OC. You can make it anything. The only difference is hair. Can I make it twiggles? Yes, you can make it twiggles. It is. Uh, then we are going to do a little half circle, like halfway on the circle. On our first circle, we're going to do a little half moon, and that's going to be its muzzle. If you want to do a stallion, you do a square or a rectangle shape. Oh, it's going to be big. Big snoot. Boopable snoot. Yes, boopable snoot. Then, to, to make its neck, we're just swooping it down and then up. I'm going to have mine be like lying on its belly. Mine's just a head. So we have the neck, which is just a little swoop shape. And then from the bottom of the neck, we go up like this. to make its butt. Then, then we go back to the top of the neck, go down, swoop, because the body is basically a bean. Now, right now it looks like a duck, but that's because it doesn't have legs yet. Oh, it's gonna be a Celestia. <laughs> To, the most beautiful of the world. to do its uh, indication of its front hooves, we're going to go to near the bottom of the front of the chest. And I'm just going to go make a little hoof. Now, hoofs kind of have like marshmallowy like bottom, so they flay, they're, they flare out at the bottom. And you only need, really need one hoof because that's the indication. And to show the back hoof, what we're gonna do is take out a new brush. I am going to use the number three Gonna take some white. Put it right on the tip and indicate where its back haunches are. I'm 
which is almost like making just a really wide three when you look at it. Fitting with the brush. Now you can add whatever hair or um, whatever, whatever mane or tail you would like. Oh, yeah, the ear. For the, for the, oh. hmm? What? For the hind leg? For the hind leg, I just used a bit of white and made like this really wide three shape to indicate where the back leg is. Just putting highlights on the shadow. Oh, by the way, for the ear, just go to the back of the head and make another half circle, just like that. It almost looks like a rounded triangle. And then you can just add whatever hair you want. I Does anyone have a con book on them so I have a better reference of your mascot? I'm going to do this. I got it. I am going to do a little. I'm going to do a little Millie, but you guys can do whatever you want. Could be your OC, could be your favorite pony. Doesn't matter. This is the customizable part. Millie has very spiky hair. And the final bit of detail once you get to, uh, once you finish your mane and tails, is just take the colors of the fireworks that you picked, you just do tiny highlights on the top of your character. So I'm putting a little bit of green on this little top part of her, and a little bit of red on the farthest right, on her little hoovesy. And then pink. Right on the back.
Did I hear arcane sorcery? Yes. Painting is sorcery. But there we go. I will wait till you guys are done and then we get to the most important step of all, signing your pieces. How did I do the poof? Oh. Okay, so for the front book, you start like right here. And you just kind of make like a curved L shape. And then to add size to it, the bottom of the poof flares out like a bell. Yeah, so it's like this, and then you flare it out like a bell. And then for the back book, I just took a little bit of white with the three brush, which is like the smallest one. I just made like a wide three shape just to indicate where the like the pop should be with this. Here, oh. I need to see that. So like you can see like around very oh, okay. wide. Twenty-five euros. <laughs> but I, you would not need to pay me for me to. If I thought that your work was crap, I would tell you. That is what a good teacher does. <laughs> but now. Interesting. Interesting. No, that was yesterday at the um, at the Crack Memory game show with me just going, interesting, interesting. But yes, now the most important step of all, signing your piece, because you are now an artist. Over the entire piece. I mean, that's a statement. You could do that. I'm not stopping you. He's a sign Yes. But yes, so. Pick whatever color you like. I would recommend a color that would pop against blue or black. White. But it's black. like white. <laughs> like purple. Pink. Or purple. Yeah, I mean, if you mix the purple with the white. You can sign the behind. I'm going to actually sign the front. Like right in the corner. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of pink. Uh, with, I'm going to go with number five just because it's the thinnest, but if you want to work with one of the brushes you've already used, you can. And I am just going to sign my little CB in the corner. And that's how you know it's mine. 
If some of you want to like print your name on the back, I do have paint uh, Poscas up here. So it, after you guys are done, you guys can come up if you want to like print your name on the back to make sure that you remember it's yours. <laughs> but yeah, not bad, not bad at all, everyone. I work at a disadvantage with these because I have to be on the side while working. So this is, this is not how I usually, I don't usually paint like this. <laughs> I'm usually like you guys, hunched over and slowly getting scoliosis. That's not that slowly. <laughs> scoliosis. But you guys made a full piece in about like an hour and a half, which is impressive. A lot of my pieces, like my full pieces, take days, even weeks, and you guys made all this in this short amount of time, so you guys get a hand from me. A lot of you guys have taken your hands, so I'm not going to do that. Tech people, clap for them! Thank you! It was just a minute. You taught us to do this in two hours. Yeah? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, heaven yes, forbid. Do you know how bad teachers get paid in America? Never. Oh, yeah. no, they, they get paid. I have, I have probably teacher. earned more with this class than a teacher earns in a day. So, yeah. oops. Unless you're a professor, I'm like public teacher. Yeah, uh, if, and that's the whole professor thing. I don't want to go to school for that long. I want to go to school. Don't make me go to school. Anyways, I taught you guys. It was fun, though. But yes, uh, and and like I said, you guys get to keep all your supplies, so you guys can like go to the bathroom and wash out the pallets. All your guys' uh, brushes have zip, lat, zip bags, so you guys can take the brushes home. So you guys can, uh, if you guys decide that you want to make this a new hobby, you have that. And if not, you have a fun memento of your time working on this. Yes. Did you guys have a good time? Yeah. yeah. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I was very worried that uh, a guided class with like a language barrier was going to be uh, worrisome because I've had some people not understand me in the American classes. You speak the same language. <laughs> but you guys did great. I'm very proud of all of you. This is actually probably the most complex painting that I've done for one of these classes. So you guys can hold that over everyone else's heads. All the BabsCon and uh, Ciderfest attendees, you guys could be like, ha, we did something more complicated than you. They got nothing on us. <laughs> but no. Have you ever spoken to like, someone from the South US? Like, I mean like really, real that guy. Oh, I'm not, a, like me or someone else? You spoke to someone like that. Oh, I mean like, here's the thing. I'm actually from the Northeast. So I'm from New York. Uh, but little story about myself. I was I had to move to the Midwest, like so the middle of the United States, um, back uh, when there was the huge recession in '08, and a lot of kids bullied me for my accent, so I repressed it for years, and now it's only starting to come back. So, but most people don't hear it because it comes back when I get angry. So never make me angry, and you'll never know that I'm from New York. Also, when I'm in teaching mode, I tend to suppress my accent because it makes them, it's proven that if you have a very flat accent, um, it's easier to listen to. That's why a lot of newscasters actually have a very, there's a specific newscaster accent. I don't know if that's a thing overseas too, where the accents of your newscasters are very, you there can't is, tell what region they're from. There is a, the newscast of British, just very, Neutral British. Exactly. It's, it's like that in America too, where it's just a neutral tone. In, in French, it's not actually a tone, it's a way of talking. Really? So, so like a dialect a, kind of thing? Uh, it's like a intonation. The very kind of. Kind of. It's, uh, French, it's an intonation kind of thing, and uh, with the uh, Netherlands and such, it's more like, uh, like you see, a, a general language. Everybody understands it's a very little dialect. Huh. Yeah. How, faci how fascinating. I love language. Too bad I only speak two. Well, I speak three, but the other language is sign language, so like. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not speaking. It's, 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 it's dancing. <laughs> um, it is a language. So I, I speak, I speak uh, English, American Sign Language, and I can understand, read, and speak uh, French, but not as good as like the other two. I took college French. Hmm? Ah, <laughs> that wasn't an understanding thing, that was a I can't hear well it thing. I just said something in French. <laughs> I did. It, it was. <laughs> I mostly use it to, I also specifically understand German curse words. Because <laughs> it's be, well, that's mo well, that one's mostly because I, I travel to Germany a lot. Uh, my partner lives in Germany, so I visit quite a bit. And, and man, all my friends there really love to just say things and then try to speak another language so that, so that way I don't understand. So it's like when you spell things out in front of a baby, and it's, so that way they don't understand it. This time, mother, hmm, technically, this is not an 18 plus channel, so I can't curse, no matter the language. Just know, I, I was going to say something not kosher. But yes, good job, everyone. If you guys have any uh, questions or anything, like um, tip, asking for tips and stuff, I'll be in the vendor hall for the rest of the day. I'm at table four, the one with the shadow boxes. Buy my stuff. I only have four boxes left, and I don't want to go home with them. But I'm glad you guys had a good time. And if anyone at, from the con asks uh, your opinion on it, please tell them that you enjoyed it because positive feedback uh, gives me the chance to do this again. And I can make it bigger and better and maybe at some point do it without having to do a cover show. But yes, thank you for your time, everyone. If any of you, uh, I have a few extra canvases if anyone wants to take any home. If you guys wanna try some painting, then uh, you are free to, but you guys are all free. Go away with you. Be gone. Wash your hands, please. But thank you for coming to Paintings and Ponies.